pressure loaded concrete construction, no tension or nearly no tension in it. You might know that Gaudi did these kind of hanging models for his cathedral in Barcelona. That is exactly the same, because the hanging model, if you turn that 180 degree around, you get from a tension-loaded model, you get a purely pressure-loaded uh, construction form. And that is the ideal form for it. If you keep it being the ideal form, it's possible to do that kind of construction with a span of 30, 36 meters. Um, and a thickness of 30 to 35 centimeters. So it's just 1% of the span, which is a sensational efficiency in construction, which is possible if you let the form be given by the construction and not by the architect, you know, forced to be like he wants it to be. Um, this is one of the first drawings showing the principle. This is one of the first membrane models. You remember this is a pure tension-loaded construction. The model itself, this is then the computer model coming out of that. It was not possible to build that in a computer purely. We had to build that model, find the general form, put that in a computer, and then optimize that in, in the computer. This is a hanging model, a very yeah, rough one in a way. Uh, the constant loads are represented by these small needles. And that's still a very efficient, in a way, sophisticated method to get the right form. This is a computer model coming out of that. That is 50% uh, of the station with a mirror in the back. And that shows how difficult that is because this is representing the surrounding landscape. This is not flat. So that influences the form. If you, if you, if you put this one a little bit higher or lower, that changes the form diagonally there and somewhere else where you can't see it even. So you have to put that in a model and from there then in a computer to make sure that the 28 eyes, which are all different at the end. I mean, they have, they have regular parts in it, but they have as well irregular parts in it, because otherwise you couldn't build it in the form work. Um, but that is a, 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 a way you have to go with your engineers and, 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 and we are still going. <laughs> it's not built yet, but um, we, will, we did the construction drawings for them. Um, we are in the tender, so end of the year we, we will get a contractor for it and, and it goes ahead. This is uh, then the final model, which is um, representing as well these forms at the end of the station, which are not concrete construction, but shell, um, shells made of steel and glass. Same principle, but as a material. And um, the trick is, we didn't want the people to go downwards into the building just, downwards into the underground. We wanted the people to enter an above-ground building and then go downstairs. And uh, the there's one uh, additional reason for that, because this level here represents a main shopping street in, in Stuttgart, the Königstrasse, and that is going all the way through the station to the other side of the station to the new city, uh, which is uh, there going to build as an extension of the city center. So we have these four shells. This is the biggest one on top of that. Um, infrastructure, very interesting point with computer model for that. The shell above it, the shell integrated into the light eyes, um, and then it gets some awards. Even if it is not built, you get more awards for that not built project than for most of the, of the built project. But uh, okay, that's good. <laughs> um, we hang all all the other constructions like bridges and, and stairs and things into it. There's no additional column in it. And um, we got a Holtzim Award 2006, which is a Global Sustainability Award. And the question is, for what did you get uh, a sustainability award for that building? Uh, OK, it's, minim it's a minimized material use. OK, OK, that's it. It is, um, it is saving the landscape, or as, at least make it possible to get that again. OK, but the main reason was that this is a very comfortable station without adding any energy to it. And, 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 and it, what helps is that it is a tunnel-related project. The tunnel provides quite constant air temperature around 7, 17 degrees, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 degrees. Because it is sloping, the whole thing is 5 meters sloping on the 400 meters, the air naturally moves through the station. And then the incoming air gets air into the station and the outgoing trains sucks it out. So there's an even better air movement through, through the station. And then the mixture of the temperature of the soil, 
the temperature of the tunnel air, the outside temperature, gives a kind of maximum of 27 degree in the station and this 32 degree outside temperature. And because you use a station, a station in dressed like, like you are outside, this is very comfortable because it's 5 to 6 degree under the outside temperature. And that's the same in the winter. You have a minimum of 14 degree, which is very comfortable to be in a station like that. So we don't have to add for heating or for cooling any additional energy. And because we have photovoltaic on the roof of the existing station, uh, and we have a very, very good daylight ratio, because these 28 light eyes provide enough daylight, just enough, that was measured in a model in the Technical University of, of Munich, and it make, made sure that this is just enough. And this is one big advantage about this kind of construction. If you get touched by the sun, at least you can step away into the shadow, because most of that, more than 80% of the station is shadowed. So you're not directly related to direct sun gain. And that is, I think, a good news about that. So this is how it looks like in the night. So artificial lighting is just provided for the night, and there it's covered by the photovoltaic on the roof of the existing station. I just wanted to make, um, show you some of the last recent uh, pictures we, we have done. There has been a development in the working drawing process, construction drawing process, tender process, but it looks still pretty much the same, but that is now uh, a little bit more feasible than it was before. Even gives an impression how that looks like. And there are a lot of special constructions around it. It's not just the 28 uh, things. It's, it's also very specially done all around the building. It's some Chicago tenium nearby. That is what you will see in the, in the garden then. That is one of the light eyes. You can do that on a completely other scale. And um, we did this. A uh, single family house in a quite beautiful landscape near to Dusseldorf. And this is a timber, pure timber construction. Um, certified wood, yes, for sure. And what is the special thing about it? It's again a carbon free uh, construction. Carbon free means we are getting energy by ground source, by geothermal equipment. We're getting it, um, excuse me, by solar collection, by solar thermal collectors and be getting it by, by electrical power purely done with wind parks and an awesome fee. You can buy that in Germany. It's bio biopower. They call it biopower. You have to pay a little bit more, like 20% more than a normal electrical power. And that's it. Much better than having a wind power in your own garden, which is very, very noisy and not allowed in Germany, by the way. And then we have as well the stormwater management and many, many other things around. So the heating and cooling of that building is provided by endlessly available resources. Um, and that is how it looks like. That, that is not just possible in Germany or mid-Europe. And that is one of the main news I would like to get to you today. That is also possible in a much more, let's say, unfriendly climate than San Francisco. For example, in Osaka, which is much more humid in the summer, much more, has a higher temperature in summer as well, and has some humidity even in winter. And we were commissioned to do that project six, seven years ago. We won an international competition, joining uh, Japanese architects for it and general planners for it. And in the middle of uh, a new, new center of uh, Osaka, near to the station, we built that building. This is the station. This is the old city center and the river. And in between here, very, very near to national road number one, which turns into national road number two, just in front of our building, because that is one of the first angles in the, in, in, in the whole street when the street comes from Tokyo to Osaka and then goes to Kobe. And that is one of the very, very few turning points. Um, the building has, in a way, two, two proportions. The one which speaks with the neighbors as on, on, on the level of high rises, and the other one that speaks with the neighbors on the level of the podium buildings, like 50 meters uh, tall podium buildings. You see that standing on that angle of, of turn of the street, it has roughly cores on both sides, a very, very efficient and, and, and flexible office space in between. And what it has is seven story of retail shops, restaurants, and things like that. And there's one special thing about that. This, this volume, speaking with the neighbors, we, have, we, we are providing a mall in, in the middle um, through the whole building with an open atrium uh, connecting 